If you've received Jesus as your Savior, know that you're born again, and yet don't have a close, intimate, personal relationship with God, you're missing the whole purpose of salvation. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. After today, you'll never think of salvation and eternal life in quite the same terms. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Again today, we're talking about eternal life. And I started talking about this yesterday on our program, and we said so many radical things yesterday, there's no way that I can go back and summarize all of it, because just repeating some of those statements would cause all of these questions that I'd have to answer. I really do want to encourage you that I've got a single tape on this entitled Eternal Life. I really do consider this to be probably the most foundational thing that I teach. Everything else is built on this. And this is also the first tape in a three-tape album that is an introduction to discipleship evangelism. That's a new program that we have, and I haven't got time to present that, but these are some great truths, and I believe that they could really make an impact on your life. Real quickly, let me just say that in John 3.16, a passage of Scripture that is so familiar to most people that they don't know what it says, it says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I was bringing out the point that we have basically put a period after it says not perish and we haven't emphasized the everlasting life. But rather, we've been talking about that the purpose, when I say we, I'm talking about the church world as a whole, has been emphasizing that the purpose of getting saved is so you don't go to hell. That is not what the Word of God teaches. This very passage, John 3.16, says that the purpose is to have everlasting life. And it just so happened that sin was a barrier that blocked us from entering into everlasting life. It kept us separated from God. So Jesus did die for sins. He did remove that sin barrier. But if you get your sins forgiven and don't enter into everlasting life, you've missed the entire purpose of salvation. And according to John 17.3, Everlasting life is knowing God and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. It's more than just intellectual knowledge. This is talking about an intimacy, a closeness, a personal relationship. So you put all this back together and John 3.16 is saying that Jesus died for your sins so that He could bring you into close, intimate, personal relationship with God, not in the future, but right here. And let me say it this way. This will grab some of you. But you know what? If you got your sins forgiven through making Jesus your Lord, and if you know that you are born again and that you won't go to hell, and yet you are not experiencing a close, intimate, personal relationship with God, you've missed the whole point of salvation. Man, that's going to startle some people. Some people are going to say, what are you saying? I'm saved. I've got my sins forgiven. Well, see, that's the point that I'm trying to illustrate. We've made that the purpose, the goal of salvation, getting your sins forgiven so that you won't go to hell. But that is not what the Scriptures teach. The real purpose of Jesus coming and dying for us was to bring us into intimacy with God. And it starts right now. John 3.36 says, He that believes on the Son hath everlasting life, relationship with God. It's not going to just start in the future. Now, it's going to continue throughout eternity and we will not go to hell and we will be with the Lord in heaven, but it's just a continuation and an amplification when we get a renewed mind that is no longer bothered by unbelief and all of these things. It'll improve and it will continue, but you know what? We now can have personal, intimate relationship with God and that ought to be the message of the church, bringing people into this relationship. But you know what? That's not... Most people are not really preaching intimacy with God. As a matter of fact, most people see people who have a real vibrant relationship with God, those are for the fanatics. Those are for the ones who want to be the super saints. And we look at that as optional, additional. This is, you know, extra credit. For those of you that want a master's degree, a doctorate degree, well, then you can go and have intimacy with God. But the average Joe Blow Christian, we believe that all it is, you just confess your sins and you get them forgiven so that you don't go to hell. You know what that has done? It's done a number of things. One of them is it has changed the whole goal of people putting their faith in the Lord. And you know, you can only receive faith through the Word of God. If you don't hear the truth preached, 
about personal, intimate relationship with God, well, then you aren't going to have faith for it. You aren't going to just automatically walk into this intimacy with God. It's something that you have to have your mind renewed and believe for it. It has to be presented as a goal. Because we haven't been presenting that as a goal of salvation, we have a lot of people who have prayed a prayer and have gone through the motions and God only knows if there is a true, genuine conversion there. I, I can't tell you. I do know this, that not everybody who goes through the motions and prays a prayer has a genuine conversion in their life. But even among those who did pray and had a genuine conversion, they've stopped short of entering into this intimacy with God. And so what has it done? It's left those people in a mess. There's a lot of people who are saved. They aren't going to go to hell, but they're stuck. That's where I was. I mean, I wasn't out enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season, but I wasn't enjoying the pleasures of God either. I was saved and stuck. I was somewhere in between. And I know what that's like. So that you can't enjoy the things of the world. You don't feel at home in the world, but you don't feel at home with God either. And you're just in between and it can be miserable. We've got a lot of people who have professed the Lord that find themselves in that situation. And so they are not enjoying their salvation. They haven't entered into the joy of their salvation. They aren't having an abundant life. And so it's bad for them personally, but you know what? It's also terrible publicity for the gospel. Probably every person watching this program at some time or another had heard somebody say something to the effect that I would be a Christian if it wasn't for, you know, those hypocrites down there at church or something. Here's an example. Let me share this with you. Mahatma Gandhi who we, most of you know, was a historical figure. He led uh, the nation of India through a peace, peaceful uh, revolt against the British Empire and won independence for the nation of India. Well, he was actually exiled for a period of time. Or I'm not sure that's right. I'm not up on all my history. But I know that he was in Africa. I think he was exiled, a political uh, deal. And while he was in Africa, he was doing some real soul-searching and he was praying and asking God to reveal himself to him. And he read a number of the different books, the Quran and a different things, searching for the true and living God. And after reading the New Testament, Mahatma Gandhi said that he was absolutely convinced that Jesus was the Son of God and that our God, God the Father, was the true and the living God. And he went to a church in Africa. It was a Presbyterian uh, outreach, missions work, he went to that church and he went for the purpose of converting to Christianity and making Jesus Christ his Lord. And when he got there, because he was black, they wouldn't allow him into the service. They put him on the outside and ridiculed him and made fun of him and basically put him down. And he, he made this statement. He said, I would have been a Christian if I hadn't have meant one. And Mahatma Gandhi turned against Christianity and led 750 million people in India into Hinduism, Buddhism, Hare Krishna, Hare Lama, all of these different things. And yet at one time, the Holy Ghost had dealt with him and he was convinced of the claims of Christianity. But people who had made Jesus their Lord, I don't know if they were truly born again, but it's possible they were, but they didn't have intimate relationship with God. I guarantee you God would have never have led any of his followers to reject anybody on the color of their skin. They didn't know God. They may have known about him. They could have been born again, but they didn't know God. So you know what? Those people were miserable, but also what a terrible witness for Christianity they gave. And today, you know, we look at that and there's 750 million people in India who don't know God and are deceived that they could have gone a different way if Mahatma Gandhi had taken a different path. You know, we say that, well, the important thing is we got to get them born again. Let's get them born again. Let's not preach to them about having intimate relationship with God. That's step two, three, four. That's extra credit. That's, you know, a, de a master's degree. Let's just get the basics. Let's get them born again. Well, that kind of thinking is causing a lot of people who've prayed the prayer to be miserable. And it's also, I believe, ultimately hindered the whole cause of Christ because we have millions of weak, anemic Christians, if they are Christians. They're weak and anemic, and they are actually a negative witness and a negative testimony for the Lord. That's not what God called us to do. That is not the message of the New Testament church. Look at the Apostle John over here in 1 John 
chapter 1. This is the apostle who was leaning on Jesus' breast at uh, the Lord's Supper, and he is called the one whom Jesus loved. He, he's characterized by love. That's the way he describes himself. And here's what he said in 1 John chapter 1. If I can get there, these pages are sticking together. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. For what purpose? That you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. He says the, what we're telling you is we aren't giving doctrine, we aren't giving theory, we aren't telling you a set of rules and regulations. We're telling you about a person. And the reason we're telling this is so that you can have fellowship with us and with the Father and with the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. John was saying, I'm saying all of these things to bring you into relationship. The thrust of his preaching was to bring people into relationship, closeness, intimacy with God. And you know what? That's the reason that the early New Testament church had awesome results. I believe actually better results uh, comparative to what we are today. They saw tremendous results because you know what? They weren't just preaching doctrine. They weren't just preaching repent or else, turn or burn. They were preaching and telling people that God Almighty loves you and you can have relationship with God. That's the reason they jumped out of stands and in the Colosseum and went out and confessed the Lord and were immediately put to death is because they saw a relationship in people that they wanted. Whether you know it or not, that's what you want. And whether you know it or not, that's what Jesus came to give you. Relationship, intimacy with God is what eternal life is all about. This is awesome. We're going to take a break. Our announcer is going to give you some information about this. And then I'm going to be right back to continue this teaching on eternal life. Before we explain how to receive today's teaching, let us remind you of the special blessing that is yours through giving to the work of the Lord. Now, the anointing that God has placed on Andrew's life and ministry cannot be marketed or purchased, but it is through your gifts of support that we're able to share it so freely with the world. Thank you. And remember that Gospel Truth is now broadcasting nationwide on the Inspirational Satellite Network, as well as across Europe, Russia, North Africa, and the Middle East via the God Channel. And we invite you to share in this ministry by sending a check today to Andrew Womack Ministries, P.O. Box 3333, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80934. Or you can use your credit card to make a donation by telephone. You can call 719-635-1111 between 5 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And once again, that number is 719-635-1111. And we want you to know that Andrew's complete teaching on eternal life is available in a three-cassette audio album, number T1028. And this album includes two other vital teachings, Discipleship versus Evangelism and The Fruit of Discipleship. It's all part of an introduction to Andrew's comprehensive program of Discipleship Evangelism. You can request this introductory album, again, number T1028, when you make a donation of any amount. Or if you prefer, you can request the single tape on Eternal Life. That is tape number TK60. This single cassette is also the tape that Andrew is making available free of charge for those who are in need. And we encourage everyone to make a donation of some amount, no matter how small. But we realize that some of our viewers are in extreme financial crisis. And we want them to receive this teaching free of charge. Be sure to request tape number TK60 when you write or call. And now, Gospel Truth continues. So in our first segment, we were talking about that eternal life is intimacy with God. And this really ought to be the message of Christianity. That's what John is saying here. He says that which we've seen, that which we've heard, we've touched him, we've felt him. This isn't just a doctrine, it's a person. You know, there's diff many differences between true Christianity and the other religions of the world. I don't even like to term Christianity as a religion. 
Because when you say religion, that basically is describing to me man's attempts to reach out to God, to explain God. But Christianity is God reaching down to us. And one of the major differences between true Christianity and religion is that religion has concepts, rules, principles, doctrines, creeds. But you know, Christianity, it has some of those aspects, but it's a person. Christianity is inviting a person to live on the inside of it. Did you know none of the other uh, religions have anything like this? They acknowledge the existence of a supreme being, and they talk about the ways that you have to approach unto Him. But Christianity, is it doesn't just limit itself to there is a God and here's the things you must do. It actually has a personal relationship to where you ask God to come live in your heart. No other religion even approaches anything like that. In a sense, true Christianity is a group of God-possessed people who are in relationship with God. No other religion even attempts anything. They don't even embrace anything like that. They don't even espouse it because it is just beyond the realm of thinking. Man, this is awesome that God didn't just come down and do something for us and tell us rules to follow. But no, He wanted intimacy with us. He brought us into a close personal relationship with Him. And you know, this is what Christianity is all about. And sad to say, there are very few Christians that really have intimacy with God. So they aren't enjoying the true benefits of salvation. They're missing out on what God really intended. Plus, they make a terrible witness because people look at them and think, boy, this is Christianity. And they see them so sad and morbid and they're just as sick, they're just as poor, they're just as hurting. And they think, well, if this is Christianity, you know, it's not going to help me in this life. Maybe before I die, I'm going to get right with God. I tell you, all of these problems, I believe so many of our problems in the church world today have arisen because we have really changed the message of salvation. We've made the message escape hell, use Jesus as a fire escape. And we haven't talked about that Jesus literally came to bring heaven and earth together and bring us into close, intimate personal relationship with God. And because of that, it's just not having the effect on people that God intended it to. Do you know that the early New Testament church, they didn't have any of the advantages that we've got. They didn't have television like what you're watching. I mean, I'm able to reach millions of people. We're reaching somewhere around 20 million people in the states over the INSP network. We're reaching around 30 to 40 something million subscribers across Europe through the God Channel. I'm reaching uh, probably well over a million or who knows how many on radio in the United States. We've got all of these advantages. I've put out four million cassette tapes. I've done all of these things. And, of course, many other ministers are taking advantage of this. The early New Testament church didn't have radio, didn't have television, didn't have tapes, didn't have any of these things. And yet they turned the known world right side up. It's even quoted over in the book of Acts. When Paul and some of his company entered into a town, it says, Behold, those that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. I mean, in their lifetime, they literally stood the world on its ear with the truths of the gospel. I read a historical account that in Africa, uh, one of the Alexandria, I believe, in Africa, it was about 60 to 70 percent Christian within 30 years of the resurrection of Jesus. And this was one of the strongholds. I mean, it was one of the major secular Greek colonies in that area. And the Christian realm had just nearly evangelized it within 30 years of the resurrection of Jesus. How did they do that without all of these advantages that we have? You know, one of the things that made the difference, they had a relationship that was so strong, it appealed to people. And sad to say, a lot of religion today, a lot of quote-unquote Christianity today is just rules and regulations and formulas and it doesn't have the relationship in it. It doesn't have the same content that the early New Testament church had because today we're preaching, believe on Jesus so you won't go to hell. They were preaching, believe on Jesus because He loves you and He wants to live in your heart and He wants to give you a vibrant, joyful life that you can't have any other way. And you know what? That was striking a chord with people that our preaching to people about escaping hell is not striking today. They evangelized the known world without a bumper sticker. Man, just think of that. 
They didn't have a single bumper sticker on a camel going across the desert. They didn't have any of these things that we've got, and they made a greater impact because they had a depth of relationship. And not just a few people who were quote-unquote the clergy, every person. This was the message that they were preaching. And they had a depth of relationship among all of the believers that was far superior to what the average Christian today has. You know, I mentioned that when I was 18, I went to Rome, and I saw these places. Well, one of the places that I went was the catacombs. And I remember going through there and reading the inscriptions. These people would have to bury their dead in the walls of the catacomb because the Romans would desecrate Christian graves. They hated Christians. So the Christians would take their dead from the Circus Maximus and the Colosseum and they would take them down into the catacombs and dig these graves into the side of the walls, put their dead in there, and then they would put plaques over it. And they would translate these. They had them translated into five languages. And I remember as an 18-year-old walking through there and reading these inscriptions. And they were all, I mean, they were praising God. There wasn't sadness. It wasn't complaining. They had such a depth of a relationship that they act like a badge of honor when one of them got put to death. What a tremendous honor to suffer for the cause of the Lord. You know, that same attitude was expressed in the book of Acts. I believe it's chapter 4 where the disciples were beaten and punished. And when they left there, they said they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. Do you know there's not very many people watching this program that if you were beaten with whips for being a Christian would walk out of there rejoicing and say, what an honor to be treated the way that my master was. I can guarantee you most of us would be thinking about, look what they did to me, and we'd be thinking about ourselves. You know why the different reactions? Because of the difference in relationship. The lack of depth in relationship is what causes a tremendous amount of our grief, a lot of our suffering. And one of those graves that I remember seeing in the catacombs, it had an inscription where a man said, Here lies my wife and six-month-old daughter who gave their life for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ today. And he gave the date in the Circus Maximus. He was, he was like an honor to him. And I read that, and I tell you, conviction came all over me. Instead of bemoaning his loss of his wife and his daughter, he was, he was glorifying God for their faithfulness and for the love of and their love for God was so great that it's like it says in uh, Revelation chapter 12 talking about in the end times Satan is going to be loosed and he'll come down to the earth having great wrath and he's going to destroy people. And it says that those who are, are truly victorious will love not their life to the death. You know what? You can fall so in love with God that your own life doesn't matter. And I know that the average person watching this program that is foreign to you. It's not even a thought. It's not even in the realm of possibility to most people. But that's a shame. Because really, this is what Christianity is all about. Jesus died for us. He gave everything for us. The least we can do is live for Him. And you know what? That's the normal Christian reality. That's the way it should be for every last one of us. And yet, sad to say, the Christian realm has basically just cheapened what Jesus came to do to say, oh, He came to redeem you from hell. Well, sure, that's one of the great benefits. But if there had never been a hell, Jesus would have come to bring you back into relationship with the Father. He created man originally. Adam and Eve were created for a relationship with God. God walked and talked with them every single day in the cool of the evening. Why? Because He wanted a relationship with man. God is love. What's the per point of being love? Not only full of love, but being love itself and having no object of your love. God created us because He wanted to love us, but He also wanted us to love Him back. And He created man for fellowship. And Jesus came to put us back into that relationship. And it just so happened that our sins had corrupted us and had blocked us from having relationship with God. So Jesus did die for our sins. But that was not the goal. The goal of Christianity is not to get your sins forgiven. The goal of Christianity is not to not go to hell. The goal of Christianity is relationship with God and you don't have to wait until you die or until Jesus comes back to experience that. You can experience that right now and that's what the Bible calls everlasting life. If you have made Jesus your Lord, if you've prayed for salvation but you don't have intimacy with God, you're missing the whole point of salvation. Radical statement, but it's true. 
And if you're watching this program today and if you have never come to grips with Jesus, you may acknowledge that He exists. You may believe that He's the Son of God. But if you've never made that personal commitment to where you make Him your Lord, you turn your life over to Him, well, that's the starting point. And it's not just so that you won't go to hell, but it's so that you can enter into relationship with Him. And that relationship will save you from hell. But you know what? It'll give you a quality of life right now that is so wonderful it wouldn't matter what the future holds. If you don't know the Lord, I encourage you that you need to call and talk to some of our prayer ministers. They're standing by at our phones from 5 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. in the States. In England, Coventry, England, you'll have that information on your screen. But there are people there who can minister to you, and I encourage you to call and let somebody pray with you and lead you into relationship with God. If you've already been born again, and you know your sins are forgiven, you aren't going to hell. But if you stop short of intimacy with God, you need to let someone talk to you and help encourage you. So please call. That's what these people are there for. We want to minister to you, and I encourage you to call that number that you see on your screen and take advantage of this and just open up your heart and begin to experience what Christianity is all about, eternal life, close, intimate, personal relationship with the Lord. Let us remind you that giving to support the Gospel Truth Broadcast is a wonderful opportunity for you. And let us also remind you that Andrew's full three-tape audio album number T1028, which includes the Eternal Life teaching, as well as two others on discipleship and the fruit of discipleship, may be requested when you send a donation of any amount to the work of this ministry. Enclose a check requesting audio album number T1028 or the single cassette titled Eternal Life number TK60 and send it to Andrew Womack Ministries, P.O. Box 3333, Colorado Springs 80934, or call 719-635-1111 to make a donation using the speed and convenience of Visa, MasterCard, or Discover. You know, the things we've talked about today are radical in a sense, and yet it's so foundational. This is baby stuff. Every Christian ought to know this. And yet most don't. I tell you, the things we've been talking about, you need this. And I want to just remind you, today's our last day. These two days only is all we're spending on this. So you need to request either the free single tape on eternal life or remember that this is the first tape in a three-tape album about the introduction to discipleship evangelism. Please call or write today and take advantage of this offer. Oh.